Hello, in this particular episode of the Iowa Vegetable Production and Management Series, I'll be talking about a pair of insect pests, the squash bug and the squash vine borer. They're not related, there's nothing similar about them other than they both happen to attack the same group of plants in the squash group. The squash vine borer and squash bug are common pests, well known to most people. You've probably seen these before and we'll uh, quickly kind of review what we need to know about them. Squash bug is a true bug in the order Hemiptera and that means it has a simple life cycle and sucking mouth parts. The simple life cycle starts when eggs are laid on the undersides of squash and pumpkin leaves by the adult. Those brick red masses of eggs then hatch into dozens of little tiny nymphs. The immature stage is a nymph and all stages, the nymphs and the adults, puncture the leaf and begin to feed on plant sap. That weakens the plant and eventually may cause that entire leaf to wilt, collapse, and turn black um, and uh, fail to function. The adult is up to an inch long. Some people call this a stink bug, though technically it's not. It can be gray, black, to brown in color, and they're fairly elongate. They're not shield-shaped like true stink bugs, more elongate. They tend to be pointed at both ends, and you can see the wings overlap on the back. The adults spend the winter outside waiting for the plants to come up the following year. So they are ready to go when the pumpkins appear uh, or in the, in the uh, field. Now, they don't appear right away on our plants, although they can be active in the spring. It's usually just a little later in the spring and almost into early summer before we see the squash bugs begin to lay their eggs. The, after mating, the female deposits a cluster of eggs. She often at the, uh, on the underside of the leaf where the veins come together at the base of the leaf, but they can be anywhere on the plant as well. There are five nymphal instars, which means what comes out of that egg is going to be very teeny tiny, but as they feed on sap, they grow and they continue to grow and develop for about a month to a month and a half. At the end of that period, the full-grown nymph will be silvery gray and maybe three quarters of an inch in length. And at that point, they will transform then into the adult stage. Typically, we have only one generation of squash bugs in the state of Iowa per year. But there are exceptions to that, and if we get a second generation late in the summer, it is usually quite troublesome because it will be a larger generation having developed and built up their population over the summer. What can we do about squash bugs? Well, crop rotation is listed, but I don't think you can hide your squash far enough from this um, adult that's going to be desperately looking for a place to lay her eggs come spring. Removing crop residue may help in reducing the population that goes into the winter, but again, that's kind of a stopgap measure. If your patch is small enough and you have enough time, you can actually uh, visually inspect for eggs by turning over leaves. Maybe when you find those eggs, you can squash them or pick that leaf off. So mechanical control of the very, uh, of the small eggs and the small nymphs might begin to hatch. Otherwise, we would use insecticides to control the nymphs as soon as they begin to hatch, knowing that small nymphs are going to be much easier to control than the large ones. And when they reach the adult stage, it seems like our insecticides don't work very well at all. Now, as far as treatment goes, remember that the eggs and the nymphs are on the underside of the leaf dropping an insecticide onto the top of the plant won't control the, the nymphs that are on the underside. So you need enough pressure, you need an application technique, maybe blowing the insecticide sideways or treating upward so that the insecticide lands on the underside of the, of the leaves. There are dozens of insecticides that can be used. Some of the less toxic ones are things like um, Azera, Actera, Asale, and Neem. 
but you've got a long list of insecticides, including the old standards like seven and bifenthrin, that will give you pretty good control of the nymphs as long as you begin early and when the nymphs are young. Squash vine borer, the second pest, is a moth, but it's not a typical moth in that they tend to be fairly brightly colored and they fly during the daytime. Because it's a moth, it has a complete life cycle and they are spending the winter as pupae down in the soil under where the crop was the previous year. The caterpillars that were inside your squash vines and pumpkin vines last year moved into the soil, they've made the pupa, and that's where they're going to wait and develop and come out in the middle of June to lay their eggs again. After mating, this uh, moth will lay her eggs on the base of the plant. Now, some people are able to see these moths. They're big, they're gaudy, they fly during the daytime, and they're noisy. Actually, they mimic a wasp. They sound and behave a bit like a wasp, uh, flying around out there in the uh, vegetable patch, looking to lay eggs on the winter squash, summer squash, and pumpkins. They could lay their eggs on cucumbers and melons in the cucurbit family, but more often, it's the squash and the pumpkins that are going to have this particular pest on them. The eggs hatch into little tiny larvae that chew a hole into the stem of the plant. They're usually laid at the base, and the, larva, the caterpillar then tunnels inside the plant and feeds inside the stalk. That stalk will become quite hollow and mushy, and uh, it'll be full of this moist sawdust-like frass that the caterpillar has chewed up and spit out. Occasionally, the larvae will also be out in the fruit itself. They, uh, sometimes the eggs get laid out on the tips of the plant, and so you'll find these larvae inside, but this wrinkly white caterpillar that's about an inch in length is fairly easy to identify. There's not much to go on other than wrinkly cream white, small black head, the key characteristic is it was found inside the squash or pumpkin stems. That's how you know it's a squash vine borer. We usually have only one generation of squash vine borer per year. Um, I've never seen a second generation, although sometimes it feels like they are. But the egg laying occurs over a long period of time. So you can find squash vine borers of all sizes through the second half of the summer. In order for a Spray program to be effective, we spray when the moths are flying. Remember that was back in June. And we put the insecticide on the stalks, the base of the plant. Spraying the foliage like we would do for squash bug is not going to stop the small caterpillars that are chewing into the stalk, usually down next to the uh, soil level. The Organic sprays of Bacillus thuringiensis, the regular caterpillar uh, BT called Dipel, doesn't seem to be very effective, but there is another BT strain called Aziwa that does seem to be effective against this one. There's also some other organic treatments, but the typical residual insecticides are also good for this. Once the caterpillars are in, however, spray treatments won't do any good. You could dig the caterpillars out, control them mechanically, and hope that the plant recovers, but that mechanical control is going to be laborious, and it's likely to come after the damage is already done to your plants. Damage is going to appear, is going to appear as wilting. If the damage inside the stalks is severe enough, the plants will just wilt and fall over and fail to produce. Maybe floating row covers could be used for a period of time to keep the moths from laying their eggs, but these are likely to be late planted squash. And of course, you're going to have to have the row covers off at the time of flowering so that pollination of the plants can take place. There are some other experimental techniques of trying to keep the plants, the moths away from the plants, but this is going to be a lot of trouble and a lot of work and um, uh, maybe not the most effective because of the timing of this particular pest. When we talk about squash bug, squash vine borer, and all the other pests, we'll remind you that the Midwest Vegetable Production Guide for commercial growers is 
reviewed and edited and produced annually. So every year there is a new edition of this particular uh, publication that is uh, created by a collaborative effort from entomologists, plant pathologists, horticulturists throughout the north central part of the United States. It's also online and you can find that by contacting um, any of the uh, vegetable production specialists that you work with from the universities or contact us here at Iowa State University Cooperative Extension through the county, local county extension offices. We'll be back to talk about other insects later, but we'll wrap this one up for now. <laughs>